We've got a fun video for y'all today. Today we're going to be talking about nighttime lighting systems for wild pigs. Wild pigs are mostly nocturnal animals and generally choose to be most active at night and also around the edges of light, such as first thing in the morning at sunrise and last thing in the evening right before sunset. One of the questions that we're most often asked is, uh, what color artificial lighting do I use to, to pursue these animals at night? Contrary to popular belief, um, wild pigs are not in fact colorblind. They can see colors in the red, blue, and also green spectrum. And they do have relatively poor eyesight, but as a result of their relatively poor eyesight, basically any color lighting can work. However, what color lighting you select can influence the acclimation period uh, or the potential acclimation period required for the animals to adjust to whatever particular lighting setup you may have. The most common colors selected are white lights, green lights, and also red lights. There's some distinct advantages and disadvantages to each. Um, and we're going to go through each one and, and kind of talk about um, what might be perceived as the, as the best advantage to each one, and then also the potential disadvantages. A common one that people pick first is, is white lighting. One of the big advantages of white lighting is this is the most readily perceptible light to the human eye, meaning that it's going to be easiest for humans to see white light and to, to make that contrast when identifying a target under white lighting. The problem there is that it's also the most readily perceptible for wild pigs as well. And so white lighting setups generally require um, some kind of acclimation period or a period in which the animals need to get used to that kind of lighting um, being available in that area. Now next let's take green lighting. Green lighting is a very very popular choice. Um, a lot of commercial pig products are out there. Um, in green light. Most shooters are most comfortable with a green lighting setup or a white lighting setup. And, and it can be very, very successful. However, there is still the, the potential there with green lighting setups, depending on the shade of green light that is being cast, for wild pigs to be able to pick up the contrast to the surrounding environment, particularly on moonless nights or cloudy nights or anywhere that you're setting up that might uh, cast a, a fair amount of night shade, uh, such as in forested areas that are otherwise pretty dark. Wild pigs can pick up on that green light contrast to the surrounding environment. And so therefore, um, there could be a, a period of acclimation necessary as well. Other than that, green lighting can be a, a very, very good choice um, particularly when paired um, with more open areas, also paired with the moon, half moon or better. And what that does is it generally cuts down on the contrast uh, to the surrounding environment, meaning that there's not as much of a stark difference between what's around your lighting setup um, and, and your lighting setup itself. The next lighting setup that we'll talk about is red light. Red light in the, the spectrum of light um, does have the longest wavelength. Generally, this lighting option will um, present the least amount of contrast to the surrounding environment. This might be a better choice if you're going to be hunting in like heavily wooded areas, areas that are otherwise generally dark that might cast a, a fair degree of night shade. It is a little bit harder for wild pigs to pick up that contrast to the surroundings, but it also means that it's a little bit tougher for you um, and for human beings to, to pick up um, that contrast to the surroundings. So a lot of folks don't prefer red light setups because it makes it a little bit harder to see the target. However, when going after uh, highly pressured pigs or pigs that have exhibited any kind of aversion to other lighting setups, generally red is a very good option because those pressured pigs, those, those mature boars, in my experience, don't, don't have the same kind of aversion to red light setups, which of course cast that longer wavelength in the spectrum of light. There's also the consideration of how is this light going to be presented in the setup. You generally have two options. Um, the two options are going to be continuous lighting, um, or intermittent lighting, um, sometimes referred to as motion-activated lighting. Now, um, regarding motion-activated lighting, if it goes from pitch black to just pops all the way on to 100%, uh, either white, green, or red, whatever color you may be um, broadcasting in your light setup, that can create a stark contrast 
Now, there are a, a fair degree of commercial products out there um, casting generally green or red setups. Um, but what these setups do is they detect the, the motion of the animal and then illuminate at the dimmest setting and then begin to slowly get brighter and brighter and brighter. Now, the, the other lighting setup that we can exhibit is a continuous um, or permanent lighting situation. And in this case, it generally doesn't matter if it's white, red, green, uh, purple, black lighting, or, or any other kind of light. This is where you start to possibly have to have an acclimation period. Generally, white light setups require the longest amount of time. Um, I would say followed by green and then all, lastly red light setups. However, that acclimation period is not always necessary. In some cases, wild pigs can come in the very first night. Um, in some cases, the, the acclimation period could be very short amount of time, just a day or two. But in some cases, wild pigs can refuse to come into white light setups altogether. Um, they could exhibit aversion to green um, and even red. And so it's up to you to kind of experiment with what works best for your particular setup, um, what you can see the best to easily and, and readily identify your target, which is 100% necessary, um, and how you want to broadcast that light, uh, whether it needs to be continuous for you, uh, whether that's the best setup for you, or whether you'd like to use any kind of motion-activated system, um, whether it comes on to full blast or slowly illuminates to um, the maximum amount of light. It is 100% legal to pursue wild pigs at night. One of the courtesies that, that uh, Texas Game Wardens request is that if you do plan to go after wild pigs at night, go ahead and give your game warden a call. Let them know, hey, we plan on doing this, whether we're uh, casting artificial light, uh, red, white, green, or whatever, whether we're spotlighting, uh, which is another application of artificial lighting, or, or even hunting by moonlight, which we should talk about as well. First, let's take spotlighting. Spotlighting is a, another artificial lighting technique that's generally best implemented in open areas such as agricultural fields and, and areas where you're going to have a fair degree of visibility. Keep in mind, there, there's no acclimation period or anything like that necessary with spotlighting. Um, but spotlighting is generally going to give you the least amount of time to acquire your target, to acquire the wild pigs. They will, a lot of times, because of the stark contrast broadcast in a spotlight compared to the surrounding environment, uh, they will immediately or almost immediately begin to run away as soon as that occurs. So you do have to be ready and prepared, uh, particularly targeting open areas and ready to execute a safe and ethical shot um, in a strategic shooting environment. The other one is, is moonlight, just natural moonlight. Now, this is not an, an artificial light, of course. Natural moonlight is natural, but this can be very effective as well. Again, this is a situation where, you know, you're going to want at least half a moon, three quarters of a moon, up to anything around a full moon. You generally are going to need a pretty good scope or optic, something in the two to seven, uh, three to nine, uh, four by 12 class, keeping in mind that the lower your magnification on your scope, the better any particular scope is going to be at being able to receive and transmit the available light around. In a night hunting scenario with a typical 3x9 type scope, I would typically run that scope at around uh, 5 to 7 power um, and, and never operating a scope at max power regardless of the power of that scope. When hunting wild pigs at night using natural moonlight, target identification is paramount. Uh, you need to know if there's any cattle or livestock or anything other than wild pigs that are going to be in that field that might be in that area, period. However, executed correctly, uh, utilizing natural moonlight can be very effective. Nighttime offers a great opportunity to pursue wild pigs when they are most active. Implementing both artificial and natural lighting setups can help to increase your success in reducing wild pig numbers and damages. Guys, uh, please don't forget to check out our website. Uh, wildpigs.nri.tamu.edu. We've got a lot of great resources on there, uh, publications, videos, articles. Um, you can put you in touch with, with, with a lot of good resources that you can download and access for free. Uh, chances are, if you have a particular question or issue with wild pigs, you can hopefully find something on there that can help you out. Thanks a lot.